Randy Savage 50 here back again with another clip. And this one will answer the age old question that I get what type of gun should I get? Or what gun should I get, Randy? Should I get this, Randy? What you think about this, Randy? Those are the questions I get, and I'm gonna answer these for you. So, first off, I'm sweating, disregard that. I've been in my backyard trying to drain my hot tub and clean it up, looking kind of funky. And you see this different backdrop here because I got rid of the Tahoe and I got this nice Ram 1500 and it's beautiful. Thank you, Bride. She, 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 she's gonna be watching this. She helped out with that. I love it. You can check it out. Look at it. Look at the wheels, shiny. Yeah, I got the rims on, it's lifted. I'm probably gonna do a review on that in the future. Just, just stay, stay tuned for it because I love that truck. I just randomly try to find reasons to drive just so I could drive it. So back to the subject at hand, the age old question, what gun should I buy? And the answer to that is, it depends, right? So I have a list of 10 questions that you should ask yourself when you are trying to consider what weapon you should buy. So what I'm gonna do is go down the list and let you all know what the questions are and then go back and elaborate on them. Now, there may be plenty other questions that you may wanna ask yourself, but these are the main ones that pop in my mind when I get that question from people. So. Hear me out, um, this isn't uh, an enlist, this isn't all that it encompasses it. Obviously there's more questions, there are more things you can consider, but these are the ones that are important to me. So we'll start with number one, and these are in no important, no specific order, they're just kind of how they came to the, my, my mind. And I'm looking down because I'm referring to my notes, so bear with me here. Um, one, it depends on what you like um, and other things. One, it depends on what you like. Never mind. It should be nine questions. That's not. Sorry. Number one. What are you going to use for? What are you going to use it for? Number two. What is your budget? Number three. What caliber are you leaning towards and why? Number four. Open carry or concealed carry. Number five. What holsters are made for it? Number six. What does it feel like in your hand? Number seven. Um, have you gone to the range to try out different guns? Number eight. Does magazine capacity matter to you? And number nine, will you carry an extra mag? So though that's a basic highlight of what we're gonna speak on here. Let's go back to number one. What are you gonna use it for, right? It's a big question because many people ask about what guns should they own in this climate because I've noticed a lot of people want to buy a gun, a firearm from home defense. So if you're gonna use it just for home defense, you may wanna change up your, your options um, due to different reasons such as size, uh, concealability, caliber, things of that nature. So if you use it for home defense, you may not choose something this small, correct? So with this small um, of a 380 caliber, yes, a job can get done, but in a home defense situation where you're gonna want to use your sights or a flashlight or something of that nature, this may not be a good choice. So home defense, self-defense, in terms of vehicular defense, um, on your person, what, however you want to use it. Um, uh, going to the range to shoot, is it just for target practice, just to start to get into weapons? Um, what are you doing with it? Are, are you trying to be a sharp shooter and eventually work yourself up to being able to shoot 100 yards? Or are you just focus on seven yards or less? in a self-defense type of situation, a home defense self, uh, situation, or a less than three yard situation of a self-defense, like in person, somebody comes up to you when you're out doing whatever, you're trying to defend your life, it's up close and personal. These things can matter due to, like I said, this may be a better weapon up close, but this one may be a better one if you need some range due to you being able to look at the, the sights, line up your sights, get a good uh, sight picture. So those things matter. Number two. What is your budget? Big question because many people recommend certain guns. Oh yeah, you, 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 the Glock 19 is perfect. That's the one you need to get. Oh, this h &K is really good. You need to get that. But some people tend to forget that many people don't have a, a, an endless amount of money. They can't afford a $600, $500, $400 gun, weapon, right? So they may want something that's more reliable uh, yet at a cheaper price. So you can find weapons that are at a lower price that will be um, comparable in the reliable right reliability section. So if your budget is something around the $200 mark, there are weapons around that uh, amount that I've seen as reliable, such as the 
Taurus P211 or Taurus G2C, whatever you want to call it. That's a decent one that I've seen due to owning three of them, um, shooting them, shooting many rounds through them, doing different tests with them. I've seen it uh, perform well. And I also know many other people who own the weapon as well as is as, as, uh, done some training with it and it's, it's been a little bit reliable. So look at your, do some research on guns and weapons in your price range. And look at the, the research in terms of performance with that weapon and reliability with that weapon. So number three was what caliber are you leaning towards and why? I'm going to show you a weapon that's chambered in 45 ACP. And this is the old eight, 1911. Beautiful weapon. A lot of people love it. And I mention it because there are many people who talk about the 45 and they say oh yeah that's the way to go i'll never go anything lower than a 45 this is what i'm gonna do anything else is 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 uh incapable of what i needed to do it's ineffective right all of that kind of stuff but it's all depending on what you want and what you feel comfortable with now of course uh ballistically there are different pros and cons to many uh types of calibers but i won't get into the ballistics on things that can help you with uh your choice and you can do some research on the ballistics and more importantly i don't really know everything about ballistics so i'm not going to kind of steer you to left field and i'm not really familiar with left field right so ballistically many people aim towards a 45 or a 40 but when you start doing your research you'll learn that nine millimeter can do a, a comparable job just like the 40 will and i've seen many people want to use a, a, a self-defense gun that they're going to conceal and get one that's in a 380 caliber. 380 can get the job done as well because the most important thing here will be shot placement, especially in a self-defense situation, shot placement is gonna matter. It may not matter as much as the caliber, but shot placement is gonna be the most important thing. Now, that's not to say that um, every round is gonna stop every single perpetrator. It depends on the perpetrator. Maybe that perpetrator is maybe wearing a lot of clothing and has a bulletproof vest under it or they are hyped up on some type of narcotics or something so that 380 round or 22 round may not be as effective especially when you only have six rounds or eight rounds in certain firearms so that's another reason why people try to get to a larger caliber and a larger weapon that has more round capacity just in case that threat does not stop after one or two rounds you don't want to be in a panic you're running out of all of your six rounds in your ruger lcp that's chambered in 380 and now you're out of luck. So that's something to consider as well. What caliber do you want and why? Um, me personally, I choose nine millimeter. Um, I think it's a good in-between. It's uh, very reliable. It's one of those uh, calibers that um, has some good kick, kick to or uh, firepower to it, I'd rather say. Uh, many people may say that the 45 has the most and it is i mean if you look at the round if i don't have it right here you can see that it's much bigger than the nine but the nine will get the job done in terms of shot placement in terms of uh, if you aim at the correct spot and you hit there shot placement is key so you can do your, do your research on 45 versus 9 40 and you'll see people's opinions on that so what caliber you want is a good question you will probably want to figure that out, do some research on that as well. Now, next question, number four, do you plan to open carry or conceal carry? Big question. There's a difference between you wanting to get a smaller gun for home defense or a larger gun because you want to carry it out and about on your person. Do you want to conceal carry a Glock 19 that is fairly larger than, well, I'll say a lot larger than the M&P shield, right? You can see that size difference there. Do you want to conceal carry a MEP shield compared to a Ruger LCP? Different sizes there. So it will matter if you want to open carry it or conceal carry it. Also with this, it's going to be a little bit tougher to conceal carry a full size weapon such as this 1911. I see a lot of people carrying around open carry. Yes, it can be concealed carry. I've seen it. But how comfortable would it be for your body and for your person? And that's one of those tests that you can test out um, when you go to a range or, or you handle some weapons. Try to try to grab it. And I think in the stores, they're not really wanting you putting stuff in your pants or holding up to your side. 
But in terms of looking at it and feeling it, getting your hands and touching it, do I think this is something that's going to be comfortable on my person? Um, and that's a, a big important thing that you want to <clears throat> consider. So conceal or open. Also, in terms of open and concealed carrying, the uh, holsters are very important as well. Get you a nice Kydex, Kydex holster for inside the waistband as well as outside the waistband. They have some decent leather holsters, but I've seen some of those kind of warp and bend. And I know now we've probably all seen that one where the, the holster's bent. This guy shot his buttocks like the side of it because he's trying to holster his weapon. The leather had bent, pulled that trigger, bam, went right through his buttocks which is very unfortunate. So I would say get a good Kydex holster for inside the waistband as well as outside the waistband uh, carry, as well as home defense carry. Have a holster that you can put it in instead of just slapping it on your nightstand. Um, those nylon uh, cotton slash uh, polyester, whatever type of holsters that collapse when you take your weapon in and out of the holster, eh -eh. get a Kydex holster. It's safer. Uh, it feels better on your person. It feels better when you when you're trying to draw a weapon, it, it twenty thirty dollars more gets you a Kydex holster. You won't regret it. Please get a good holster when you're trying to buy a firearm. So, next que next question is a big one to me. Which holster or what holsters are made for the particular firearm that you want? That's a big one. If you're leaning towards a weapon such as a a Ruger LCP because it's small and you want to fit it in your purse or fit it in your back pocket or in your, your center console, it's not safe at all just to put the weapon inside those locations just like this. You're gonna want a holster for it. So when you hit Google or, or eBay or Amazon, how many holsters will you find for that weapon? I've looked. There aren't as many holsters for this weapon as there are for the other the weapons I've just shown, such as the Glock 19, the MAP Shield. So will it be more difficult for you to get a weapon, a holster for the whatever weapon you choose, or would it be more expensive for you to get one? Some people, uh, many places custom make holsters, which is fantastic, uh, but will you be spending more of an arm and a leg that you're not trying to spend because you're on a budget? Some tough times now. Uh, so would you want to find something that has a, a decent, uh, more affordable holster? So that's why that's on the list for me. It's very important, especially when I look for firearms, I immediately look at the holsters. Can I get a holster shipped to me today so I can have, I, I, Order it, have it shipped to me sometime this week so I can have it. Like, I, I, I would never carry a weapon without a holster. I need my holster, right? And I personally don't want to go through all the arm and the leg of, of emailing people, hey, I have this weapon. I need it custom made because I know there aren't any holsters for it. Yeah, I got just a two-week time due to uh, societal issues. It's going to be a while, all that. I'm not trying to go through all that. I personally want to Google this holster, Google this weapon, put holster after that name, and one pops up. So look for a weapon that has holsters that are more accessible to you. Next question, a huge one. The first thing I say when, I, when people ask me what weapon should I get, I say, well, it depends. And then I follow that up with, well, have you, hold, have you held that weapon? How does it feel in your hand? That is a big one. Many people, many people, when I first started getting firearms, this was the weapon that people recommended. Oh, the Glock 19. Literally, every person, about 10 people, the Glock 19, you need to get it. You need to get it. And I felt it, felt it, and I love it. Like, I have large hands, and it feels good in my hands, especially with the beaver tail that I put on there with the grip. Um, oh, back strap. Uh, it feels great. But this may not feel the best in your hand. You may have a smaller hand. You may have a larger hand. Uh, you may not like how some of the meat hangs off down here by the mag, well, you may not like that, right? You may not like how these finger grooves are, how this texture is, you may not like it. So just because 80% of the people that you speak to like a Glock does not necessarily mean that you'll like it. So get a gun, fill it in your hands, go to a range, hold these weapons. If you got a friend that has the weapon, make sure you unload it, make sure you double check it, hold his, see how it feels, put it in the holster, wear his holster around his, his house. See how it feels. See if you think you really, really like it. Line it up. See if it feels good. Do that. Because many people will like a weapon when they see it on their friend, but they'll go to the store without testing it out, doing any research, holding it, buy it, get it home. The next day, go shoot it. Like, man, I really don't like this, this weapon. I just spent $500 on this weapon, but I don't really like how it feels in my hand. 
So make sure you like how the weapon feels in your hand before you purchase it. Um, let's see. And this is a segue to my next question. Have you been to the range and shot this weapon? You can go to many ranges and rent many of these weapons that I've shown you, um, at least for size comparisons. They'll have the, mostly, they'll have like the Glock 19s, the Glock 17s, which is the full size version, a smaller one, smaller weapons such as the uh, MMP Shield. Um, they may have a Ruger LCP or something small like this. So you can kind of test out different uh, size weapons as well as different calibers. And I think that is very important. You may love a wheel gun on its face. You may love this revolver, but when you get to the range and you see how snappy or how it feels when you grab this grip, because it's a lot different than a, a normal handgun, in my mind it is, you may not like it, right? So, and this is a 38 Special. This is the caliber that this one is. So go to the range and actually rent these weapons. It's not that pricey, especially if you're gonna make that big investment on a firearm. I think some places have it where it's maybe like $10 to rent one, one, one weapon and then maybe $5 each weapon. Don't quote me because each place is different, but uh, it, it may cost you some money on the front end to buy ammo and rent these weapons, but I think it, it, I know it'll be worth it to actually know which gun you actually like, which one feels great in your hand and that you really want to take home and, and use for self-defense or home defense. So go to the range, try these weapons out, get some, get some time in it. Uh, definitely look for uh, quality instructors. At these ranges, they have great instructors. So it's, it's great to have these people there to help you out. Going to your buddy's backyard is fine, uh, but you may get some more insight on the specifics on certain weapons if you go to one, go to a range and have an actual certified instructor help you out with it in, in grip and uh, uh, sight and line, all of that stuff. So next one, does magazine capacity matter to you? And I think that's a big one, and it's key specifically for concealed carry. There are people that I've met who are fine with carrying a Ruger LCP that only holds, I believe, six rounds, and they don't have any spare magazine. They just carry six because only a few will get. To, I only need a few to get the job done, or what have you. Now, you you, you can believe what you want or, or do what you want. It's your choice, but is that what you want to do, or? Would you rather carry a more full-size weapon, um, such as, I believe it's subcompact. It's not, as, as, it's not a full-size like this one. It's like the, the, the step below it, which is a little bit smaller, but obviously it's a little bit bigger than something such as this MMP shield. But would you want to carry that weapon that I previously shown, the uh, Ruger LCP with six rounds, or would you want to carry something like a Glock 19, Gen 4, what this, what this one is, that hold 15, round magazines and one in the chamber. So 16 rounds versus six rounds, big difference. Or if this is too large for you, remember you're going to test out these weapons and hold them and you like the way this MMP shield feels and you carry a weapon like this that holds eight rounds in the magazine and one in the chamber. Now obviously you can probably get bigger mags or mag extensions, but I'm talking about what you'll get when you buy the weapon. So an eight round magazine and one in the chamber, nine. Is that enough for you? Do you think it's gonna be enough for you? question is you don't know you don't know what the situation will be so why not get more magazine capacity if you can or carry a second magazine and i'm going to bring that into this one that's the second one are you going to carry an extra magazine right so if i carry this weapon with an eight round magazine one in the chamber that's nine rounds and i carry a secondary eight round magazine now i have 17 rounds of firepower compared to just something a little bit larger such as the glock 19 that I have 50 round magazine and one in the chamber, 16 total. So 16 with just one magazine, nine with just one magazine. Does it matter to me, right? Or do I want to go ahead and bring a secondary magazine with this one? So now I have the 16 in this entire uh, contraption, I like that word, and then 15 in the secondary mag, so now we have 31 rounds opposed to this one in the extra mag will make it 17 total, right? So. It's all about choice and how you feel. Um, I'm pretty comfortable either way. Uh, shot placement is key, and I'm comfortable with a few rounds if I may need a few rounds. But you never know how many threats may present themselves. You never know what, what kind of malfunctions you may have with that magazine or with those rounds. So it may be smart to carry a second magazine to reload and, and fix those malfunctions. So 
carrying a magazine is smart uh, just because it, obviously it's more rounds. If something happens with the magazine that you have in it, you have a replacement magazine, your friend or spouse may have that same weapon. They may need some extra rounds. You can toss that magazine to your the person that's in the vehicle with you or, or, or what have you. So those are my points. I think they are huge. And I'm gonna do a quick rundown on the weapons that I've shown so far to do kind of like a size comparison. If you are trying to look for a weapon to carry, one of the smaller ones, you can get like a Derringer or something like this small kind of, but one of the smallest ones that I've seen that people will usually go to for concealed carry is something like this, which is a Ruger LCP. Very small size, I have large hands, but this is my hands behind it. A Ruger LCP, this is chambered in 380. This is a viable option if you choose to go down to a 380 caliber. This this one. The next one I would say is bigger in, size, in terms of size. This is a revolver, five shot revolver. One, two, three, four, five, five. This is my Taurus 856 Elite UL, I believe it is. No, 85 UL. Sorry, I haven't decided this taking a while. <laughs> this is chambered the 38 Special. Bullet is a bit bigger than the uh, 380. So this is a viable option. Many people like revolvers. I think this is a decent choice, a little bit bigger than what that was, but we'll progress further to another larger weapon, which is this MP shield that I have that's chambered in nine millimeter. I have the whole grip on it, it helps me when my hands are big, and this is one of the ones that I carry on a regular basis. This one, as well as my Canic TP9 uh, Elite SC, sorry. <laughs> I know you've seen it in some of my previous videos. I love it, but this is the MEP Shield. It's a good choice that people have. People like to carry either their purses, on their hip, inside the waistband or outside the waistband, have it for home defense. It holds eight rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber, that's that one. Or you can go a little bit larger with this Glock 19. It doesn't matter the gen, they're about the same size. Well, they're all the same size, but this specifically is a Gen 4. 15 round magazines come with it. And one in the chamber, so that's 16 rounds. You can conceal carry this one, I do. I'm 6'2", 260, so I have a little bit more girth to uh, conceal it. So it may be a little tough if you have a smaller frame to conceal it and try to hide printing and things of that nature. But this is that chamber in a nine millimeter. I think I already said that, but when you get to this level, I have some smaller ones with this point that I'm about to mention, but this level, you'll see that you have room for a flashlight, which is key to me in home defense or self-defense. You never know when you may need a light when you're carrying your weapon. So this is the size that I would go to if I were choosing. Like if I had to leave the house right now and it was an emergency and I wanted a weapon with a lot of uh, fire, pa fire power and capacity in terms of the magazine, this is what I'm gonna grab. And it, it helps that I have mini magazines for it as well and I can put a light on it and have night sights. I'm happy with this. So this that one. A little bit bigger to a full-size weapon is this uh, 1911 chambered in 45 ACP. This is one of the first 1911s I bought. Well, it is the first 1911 I bought. The American Classic II. Beautiful weapon, trying to go slow. Made by Metro Arms. I put this little rubber grip on here. I love it. So it's full size weapon. You can't mount any, mount any light on it, but this is like the the one of the largest things you get. I mean, you can go to the size of like a Desert Eagle. I believe that's a lot larger or, or a little bit larger. I'm not sure, but in terms of what I've seen people open carry or have on their person in terms of self defense or in their home, this is this is one of the larger full size weapons. So those were the options. I believe I answered the questions pretty adequately, and. Um, like I say, what kind of weapon should I buy? It depends. So it depends on all of those nine uh, questions that I answered, the nine top things that I tell people when they ask me that question. But I'll highlight the key ones is, get your hands on the firearm that you're interested in, go to the range and test out that weapon, get very familiar with it, very comfortable with it, and make sure you do everything safe with it. So um, those are the main points. I hope you enjoyed it. Any other points that I forgot to mention that you all know that you all 
uh, thought of, go ahead and drop me in the comment. Help your fellow new or, or old uh, firearm owner and they can come up with some better ideas or better tips in terms of what weapons should I get or what weapons should I now get since we all are in this phase of let me continue to buy weapons because of societal issues that are going on or just the love of and the collecting um, nature that we have of them. So I don't know what my next firearm would be. I've been in the market, trust me, but the next one that I get, I'll definitely do another video on it, probably a review or just a quick overview of it. But uh, Randy Savage 5 you're checking out. Thank you for watching my video. Like, love, subscribe, comment, uh, check me out on there and um, try to drop more content as much as I can. I try to do at least a video once a month, once every few weeks. It gets a little busy with work, with uh, this COVID stuff going on, my wife, my son, it, it's, it's a lot. But I still try to throw some videos for y'all, throw some content in because I love y'all and I like doing this for you all. So. Be blessed. Y'all have a great week. Randy Savage 50 checking out. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. I got some quick shout outs to some people on Instagram that I follow. They have some beautiful information in reference to the, uh, the gun community, uh, such as Trill Toya. Shout out to her on Instagram. Follow her. Um, my sister's Keeper's Defense. Shout out to Tig Washington. She's doing a great thing. Follow her on there. Orange Bearded Warrior. He's got a great channel. Some good content on there. You can also follow him on his YouTube channel. Uh, Kari Chronicles, K-H-A-R-I Chronicles, really cool guy. Chris Hoodneck, shout out to him. Tat45, shout out to you, my boy. Uh, the Black and Gold guy, a.k.a. Tactical Jack, he's got some good content on Instagram as well. Tactical Car, we all love him. He's doing a great thing, so shout out to him. Boom, they do that. Um, also, my guy, M-Town Django underscore, has got an Instagram. who has some great content that does a lot of dry fire, does a lot of things in terms of firearms, so shout out to him. Again, M-Town Django underscore, Tactical Car, <coughs> sorry, Tactical Car, Black and Gold guy, Tat45, Chris Hoodnet, Iron Bearded Warrior, uh, my sister's keeper of defense, Trio Tora. There's some other ones as well, but those are the ones that I watch every single day that I see that new content. There's some other ones I just can't get them off my head right now. I can't remember them. Sorry about that. There is some love. I'll show you some love in some other videos, but those ones I just mentioned, mentioned, please try to find them on Instagram as well as YouTube to get some more perspective and some more content. Boom. Randy Savage 5 checking out. Mm.